Okay, so for this problem, because we have a fraction, it's better to rewrite this with negative exponents first before we find our antiderivative. So I'm going to do negative 2, negative 1. I'm going to write it this way u minus u the negative 2. Now we're ready to find the antiderivative using the inverse power rule. Raise the power by 1, divide by new power, so u squared over 2. Next, you get this, raise the power by 1, you get u negative 1 over negative 1. And again, we're not using the plus c here at this point, but what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. u squared over 2, negative negative gives you a plus, so plus 1 over u. We have our line drawn here from negative 2 to negative 1. That means that we have the antiderivative complete and we're now ready to plug in the numbers. So I have negative 1, that whole thing squared, or 2 plus 1 over negative 1. So again, you're starting with the top number we're putting in for both of these. You're subtracting. I'm going to put all this inside parentheses. Negative 2 goes in there. Negative 2 squared over 2 plus 1 over negative 2. So now it's just a matter of working all this out. That's going to get you the exact value of the area underneath the curve between negative 2 and negative 1. This part, you get 1 half minus 1. Work this out inside here. That's going to be 4 over 2. It's 2 minus 1 half. Then when we work this out, you get 1 half minus 1. And then we'll just distribute the minus through negative 2 and then plus 1 half. 1 half and 1 half gives you 1. Minus 1 gives you a 0, which means that your answer for this problem is going to be negative 2. If you were to take a look at the, the graph on this one, this gives you a visual. This is in your notes that you can look at for reference. But uh, when, you, when you do this kind of problem, we have a, a curve over here that's, that's going in on this side of the graph. And we kind of have an asymptote here because we have this. So you've got this portion that's going to come up and then go down that way. But you're trying to find the area between the curve only. So this is actually the area that you get. So notice that our answer ends up being negative. So it is possible for you to have a negative area here. If the area itself is completely all below the x-axis, then that tells us that we have a negative area. So because it's drawn that way, uh, it's all below the x-axis, you get negative 2, so it is possible you could have a negative area. Okay, so here's another one where we want to use exponent rules to first simplify it before we take the antiderivative. In this form, what we're going to do is we're going to change this into a rational exponent. We'll do that first, and then we can do some division. So on top, 3x squared minus, this is going to be x, the inside power, divided by the outside one. So x to the 2 thirds, 3x squared down below with our dx. Okay, then next, we're going to take everything on top and divide it by 3x squared because you want to simplify this down as much as possible. So we're going to do 3x squared over 3x squared. Don't forget that you're dividing both of them by 3x squared. You're not just reducing that one only. x to the 2 thirds over 3x squared dx. Okay, so now it's just a matter of subtracting the exponents here. We have 2 thirds. We're subtracting 2. So 2 thirds minus 6 thirds is going to be negative 4 thirds. So I get a 1 from that first part. This will be a minus 1 third x to the 4 thirds, uh, and that will be negative with dx. So again, 2 thirds minus 6 thirds, negative 4 thirds. Now it's set up properly to where we can use the inverse power rule. Okay, so when we do that one, actually we don't need to show the integral symbol when we do, when we do the antiderivative. You can actually remove that. Okay, we get x for this one. This we get a one-third, raise the power by one, divide by the new power. If I add one to this, I'm adding three over three, I get negative one-third. I'm dividing it by negative one-third. So what will happen there is I can simplify it. Of course, I'm going to put the line there. I get x minus 1 thirds cancel. Negative or negative gives you a plus there. That's x to the negative 1 third, which actually 
because I'm plugging numbers in now, it's okay just to, to write it uh, just like that. So I'll write it as a fraction on the bottom positive exponent. We're now ready to plug in our numbers from the original integral by using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. 8 goes in first, 8 plus 1 over 8 to the 1 third, technically that's 1 over the cube root of 8, and we have minus 1 plus 1 over 1, you get on the inside. Alright, so this part you get 8 plus, this is going to give you a 2 on the bottom, cube root of 8, and then this part inside is a 2, so we have minus 2 there, and so we end up getting 6 plus 1 half, and then we add that together, we get our final answer of 13 halves.